Begin the current daf, Mesech Tzbah B'Kam Adav Kovav, on the top line of the Amid, we're in the middle of a Gemara's discussion from the previous daf with the teaching of Rav Sheshis. Rav Sheshis said that if someone is kaifer by a Bekadon, he denies that he has someone else's object that he's watching for him, Nasa love Gazlan, he becomes by that denial a Gazlan, and he's chayiv and oinsen from that point onward. So even though there's no shvua, just the denial makes him into a Gazlan, and the Gemara continues asking on that opinion, from the uh, from a from a from a different teaching. Shus kuz ban bekalzech and cheska turned to the davchaim. She turned to today's daf. She be eschus vachidim they saw in Eretz Yisrael throughout the entire world. So we're discussing today's daf are if someone makes a claim of mano libiyadcha. There's a hundred dinarim that I have by you, and v'halo aimer in lucha biyadi klum, and the other guy says I don't have anything, and benish be swears falsely. Uvo edim the witness to come and say. Uh, you do have the hundred and nine. Actually, it's going to be potter, which will explain very interestingly why that would be if you have witnesses who say he has the, the money that he stole, <coughs> that, he, that, he, that he claims he didn't have, uh, he'll be potter. So to tain tainus ovad, if someone, and this is the theme of, of, the, of the, the basically whole, the whole daf, if someone makes a claim that it was lost, and he swears, and then witnesses come, they're also going to be potter. In contrast, We'll explain why this would be different. Toyed Tainus Ganav, specifically, and this, the words here are very uh, particular, if he makes a claim that it was stolen, he's Nishba, he swears, and then he admits, Chayib, then he's going to be liable. So it's specifically, he's making a claim of Geneva, and he admits, then he'll, then he'll be Chayib. So I put in terms of content today's Dabba, Toyed Tainus Ganav, Bibi Cotton. Someone makes a claim by something that he's watching that it was stolen from the Kevel. He pays Kevel like as if he was a Ganav himself. The, making a claim of Ganav is the same thing. And turning time is Ganav, but they did so too if, like, not by a Pekadim, but by a lost object. If he claims it was stolen from him, he's also from the Kevel. He pays Kevel. So we get the current daf. First, we're finishing up just the conversation with the previous daf. <coughs> and with that answer that we're going to say is going to open up a whole conversation that we're going to have in today's daf. The Gemara says, Amr Ilfa. Again, this is asking on Rav Sheshit's teaching that if someone just kaifer by Pekad and he becomes a Gazlan already just by that denial, and now he's Chayv and Oitzin, meaning although he's a Shemachinam, Shemachinam is Potter and Geneva, Exel and Baveda, and he's Potter and Oitzin, but by denying it, he's like a, he's stealing it now, and therefore he's a Gazlan, and he's just like a Gazlan Chayv and Oitzin, so too he will be. In fact, the Gemara, Amr Ilfa, but Ilfa says, Shavu Akaina, the Allah is that if you make an oath, of denial, then you acquire the object that you're denying, which the assumption of the Gemara right now is in its question, and that it's meaning then you'll be liable for Einzin from the moment you swear falsely. So it says the Gemara, so you see, if you make an oath of denial, then you acquire it. Of a kfir, but just denying. Like Kanye, not kainid with Kenyan Gizela. So therefore, that seems to contradict the teaching of Rav Shesh, who said just by denying it, you already become a Gazan to be Chayv and Einzin. Says the Gemara, no, here, Hachanami, if you recall, the last Gemaras that we had said in the previous death was like we had said, the Kaim of Ba'agam. We said there's a difference if the object is right here <coughs> in his hand or if it's in the swamp. We said in the swamp, then we said, you're yeah, right. Then just denying it would not make you into a Ghana because then you're just pushing it off. You planned on giving it back. You just didn't have time, so you're doing some type of stalling tactic. That's when we're going to say that just the denial is not going to make you a Ghana. It's only if you swear to that effect. Or if you if you want, you could say, and, and this is what's going to open up the whole daf today. What does Ul Ilfa mean when he says that if you take an oath, then you acquire? It doesn't mean the Kenyan Gazela that then you're a Goslin. No, he means totally being acquiring it, that then you're not going to pay anymore. And this is a very interesting halacha. What does that mean? Kedravuna. Then Ravuna Mirav, he says, let's say, Manali Biyatcha. Someone says, look, there's a hundred dinarim that you owe me. The guy says, Ein lecha You don't have anything by me. And the Nishman, he swears to the fact. The boy, and the witness comes and says, What are you talking about? We know that you, there's the hundred dinam that you owe him. Potter, he's exempt. Why would he be exempt? Right? He swore falsely, and witnesses say that he owes it. Because okay. Shnemet says a pasik in Shemois. What's the Einish for Shavu and Shah? No, not even Einish. Witnesses say that he has the money that he, that he owes him. And, and because he swore, yeah, so exactly, that's what the Gemara is saying. Shanem, it says in the Pasuk, um, the Pasuk there is talking about Shavuos Hashem Tiyah Ben Shnehem, that there's an oath between the, the owner and the guy he deposited by, 
if he didn't touch uh, what was his other his friend's thing. And the Pasik says, and the owner's gonna take it, and he's not gonna pay. What does this mean? So the simple understanding of the Pasik is that well, you have a, yeah, the, the, the owner's claiming one thing, the, the Shaymer's claiming another thing. Shaymer swears, ah, I didn't do anything wrong, and okay, the owner will have to take the oath and he won't pay. But the way the Gemara, the way Rav, the way Rav, uh, Rav, Rav Huna translates this, is that once the owner accepts the oath, the, 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 the Shemit doesn't pay money anymore. means to say, the moment the owner takes the oath, you cannot incriminate him anymore. Even if witnesses come along, he will not pay. But he has like a migri. It's such that easily, I wouldn't accept the shul if I wouldn't know anything was happening. Why is that a, why is that a migri? I wouldn't I, tell I know, It's like... That doesn't, this doesn't sound like a migri. You accept it because that's, you know, what am I going to do? Exactly. So once you accept the oath, that's your, so to speak, payment, but and now he doesn't owe anything. Maybe he's not in the shadish. I mean... What's accepting the oath? The Pasuk, the Gzeza was saying, you could get into the logic of the understanding it, but the way the Rav Huna is saying is that the Pasuk is telling us, you took this oath, Velo mm-hmm. Yisham, why do you say the words Velo Yisham? Of course, you take the oath. Saying, that's it, okay. he paid up his dues by making the oath, which is an interesting halacha, definitely, but that's the halacha. And again, so that's the second answer to, il- to the question from Ilfa. Answer number one was, Either talking about the Kaim of Agam, it's in the swamp. So then we said from the previous stop, that's not considered a denial that will make you into a Gazan. Or answer number two, of no, of course that you're kind of, you're like a Gazan already from the Kfira, from the denial, like Rav Shesha said. So what does Ilfa mean that Shavu is kind of? It means you're actually kind of, it totally. You, you actually own it. You don't have to pay him anymore for that thing you were watching because you made an oath to that effect, even if Aiden would come after it. Now that we said this answer, this gets us into a whole conversation. Gufa says the Gemara. Gemara goes back now to delve into this topic, quoting Umar of Hunamirab, which we just said for the second answer of the question. Manali Biyatcha, again, repeating the same teaching. If a guy tells another person, there's a hundred dinarm that I have, but you follow him, and the other one says, it's not true. You don't have anything, my I don't owe you anything. Vindish Bani says, I swear that I don't owe you anything. Ubo Aidim, the witnesses come and saying, Hey, Tatala, you do owe, you have this hundred dinarm. Pate's exam, Shemekah says in the Pazik, the owner will take the oath and he doesn't pay. Once the owner accepts the oath, so then the, uh, the defendant, the Shemer, doesn't have to pay money anymore. That's the teaching of Rapuna. Says the Gemara, Omar Rav, he says, it's logical that the teaching of Rav would be bemilva by a loan, specifically. When the borrower is denying the, own, the owing of the loan, why over there would you be exempt, which is the teaching of Rav? Because the Lezah Nitna, a, a loan is meant to be spent, and it requires a payment. You could say, by an oath, you exempted yourself from payment, because it says, Velo Yashalem, and you won't pay. It's a tashlumen, meaning you owe something. That's what he's saying. If he, if he accepted the oath, that's it. You don't have to... Uh, he doesn't, doesn't accept monetary payment after that. But by a deposit, when you're a shamer, the, the, the object is, is in the possession of its owner. There's no valoy shalim. Wherever it is, it's the owner. It's not, you're not paying it. Just give it back to me. It's mine. So you would think, based on logic, says Rava, that Rav's teaching would only be by a loan and not when he's denying a deposit. But well, Kim, he swears by God, I'm a Rav. Rav said his teaching a Philip Bikadin, even by deposit. You know why? <laughs> because the Chik Sev Krab Bikadin Sev. The Pasik that we're darshning, that we're expounding, is written by a deposit, by Hashem Sacher. So therefore you see that this halacha would apply not only by a milva, but even by a Bikad. That's what Rav qualifies. Now the Gemara continues and says, Yosef Rav Nachman Bekamal HaShemaitzim. Rav Nachman was sitting, and he was saying over this teaching of Rav Huna. So Rav Nachman Yumi asked on Rav Nachman, which again is this teaching of Huna from a Mishnah later on of Kovches Mabes. The Mishnah says like this: If someone says, uh, "Where's my deposit I gave to you?" Amalei says, uh, "Ovid says it's, it's it got lost." He says, I'm going to make you take an oath." And he says, "Yes, that's a response. That's like a, a, a taking of an oath." But and then after he takes the oath that it was lost. So although let's say the Shemachin is putter on when it gets lost, 
But the witnesses actually testified that he himself ate it up. So he's a liar. And he actually ate it himself. So the Allah is Misham as a Karen. So the, the, the Shemer has to pay the principal, obviously, because he, he, he's the one that consumed it, which Rashi points out, not any Kafel. Why no Kafel? You have witnesses that say he's the Ganav, is because the Kafel only applies what's called Betoyin Tainas Ganav. Although Kafel applies not only by an actual robber, but also someone who he was a Shemer and he also stole. But it's only when he claims that it was stolen from him, not when you claim it was lost. It's only by claiming it was stolen. Here he claimed it was lost, but he's not going to pay Kefal. And Chaymish, a fifth, and Asham also don't apply, because that's only when you admit, not when witnesses catch you. Like it says by Gez Lager, it says Vezvadu, that's when you pay the Chaymish and the Asham. So it's only the principle, not Kefal or Chaymish or Asham, as Rashi explains. Okay, continues the Mishnah. Hoi de me'atzmoi. If let's say after he swore falsely, it wasn't that witnesses came, it was he himself admitted that he swore falsely, then Misham Karen, then we'll pay the principal, the fifth, and the Ashram, like we said, because that's the halacha when you swear falsely, and then you admit, like we learned from the parish of Gezla Ger, that then you pay uh, an additional fifth and a carbon Ashram. Okay, but, and this is the way Rashi explains the Gemara's question, Tais uh, discusses otherwise, but Rashi says one thing is we see from the Rasha of the Mishnah, uh, as we'll see in two Dafim, that you pay the principal through witnesses. That's difficult on Rav. Because Rav said, once you swear, you don't pay, even if witnesses come. Yet here we see in the mission of Kufches that here he swore falsely that he said it was lost. And then yet in spite of that, the mission says, if witnesses testify, you've got to pay the principal. According to Rav, you shouldn't be paying. According to Rav, you should be potter. Now Rashi says, the question is not from the Seifa of the Mishnah. Because... What I mean, you could ask the same question of the Sefer. When you swore falsely and then you admitted why you're paying the Karen the Ashim, I thought once the guy accepts an oath from you, there's a Velo Yishalem. So it says Rashi, no, because when you admit, Rab wasn't talking. Because it says, you have to return what you stole. And that Pasuk is Toma when you swear and you admit. So as we'll see later on, when you swear and you admit, that's clearly the Pasuk tells you you do have to pay. Rav's teaching is only when you swore falsely and you did not admit. But Adam did come. That's when you don't have to pay. That's what the Pasuk is saying, the owner took already your oath, but you don't pay anymore. Oh, so that's what the question is from the Reisha. The Reisha, how do we understand when the guy said, and he says yes, which is an oath, that it's, it was lost, and the witnesses come and say that he ate it, why is he paying the principal according to Rav Yishim Potter? The Pasuk doesn't differentiate whether he admits or doesn't admit. How do we darsh him? The Pasuk doesn't say anything about admitting. Right, right so we're going to see later on. Exactly, we're going to we'll see later on the Gemara. The Gemara doesn't know this yet. We're going to see later on the Gemara that idea, but that's what the Gemara is asking, according to Rashi, only from the Reisha, that Tais discusses that, what the Gemara's Havamina is, if Rab said you putter even by when you admit, and therefore the question would be even from the Sefer, that's what Tais discusses. But al Kapanim, from the Reisha is definitely a question on Rav. So Amalei Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, <laughs> it's not difficult on Rav. You know why? You know what this Mishnah on Dav Kofches is talking about? Yeah, the guy swore. He said, and he answered, and he, was, he, he took upon himself that oath. But he took it out of court. An uh, oath out of court is not as strong as an oath to exempt him from the obligation of his monetary liability. So although the Pazit said, that's only when you have an oath in court. Out of court is not so strong, and therefore that's why if witnesses subsequently come, he will be chayv. And so we learn that later on. Learn what later on? That the, that the oath, how do, from where do we know that in this particular case, an oath out of court is... No, that's what the Gemara is telling us, that, that that's not considered as a shvua, which we find in other places. Ad elikim yobi name. we find that the the thrust of an oath is specifically uh, in court. So on that, Amalei said to him, Ihachi, if that's the case, that it's talking about an oath out of court, well then, Amos Sefer, let's look at the end of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says further, Hechen Pekdoini, where's my deposit? Where's the thing I, I, I gave you to watch? And he says, Oi, Nig never got stolen. He says, Mashbrechana, I'm going to take an oath for me because of, you want to get off the hook just saying it was stolen? And he says, yes, I swear that it was stolen. 
And then, and then the witnesses testify that, no, he himself stole it. They see on the video cameras, they say that we, we, we not video camera, we saw, we saw the guy take it off himself. So Mashiach says, he has to pay Kefal. So the guy ultimately, subsequently admits it on, the, on his own. He pays the principal, the fifth and the Asham. Says the Gemara, if you're going to assume to say that the oath that the guy took was out of court, is there going to be a lach of kefal? Meaning, when you're a shamer, the only way you become chay of a kefal is if you make a claim that it was stolen and you swear to that effect. But that's only uh, in, in court itself. If you swear out of court, as you're saying, it doesn't have much validity. So how are you going to be chay of kefal if having sworn that it was stolen and then it turns out that you stole and witnesses testify to that? Why chay of kefal then? If you tell me that the mission is talking about when the oath is out of court. So Amalei, so he said back to him um, that Yechon Lishnuilach, says Rav Nachman, I, I can really answer you that Reisha, the first case of the mission on Dav Kofches, the case that we discussed before of when he says, Where's my Pekadin? And he says it was lost, and he says, I want you to swear, and the witness says, way that he ate it, that he has to pay the Karen. I could tell you that was Chutzla Bezin. And that's why it doesn't contradict the Rav's teaching that once you take an oath, even if Aiden come, you're going to be potter. Why are they going to be chai? Because it wasn't the real oath. It was the oath out of court. And I can tell you the Sefer, then you're going to ask, what's with the Sefer if, if it's not a real oath? <laughs> so, then, so then why are you chai kefal for having made a claim of tying this and then swearing to that effect? I can tell you the Sefer is So I, 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 If I really want to, I can tell you the Reish is, is out of Bezdin. And the next case in the Mishnah was in Bezdin. But I'm not going to give you what's called a I'm not going to give you, a, 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 you know, an answer that's pushing it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a different answer. But I could tell you that. Rather, I'm going to tell you, No, both the Reisha and the Sefer are in Bezden. So if it's in Bezden, so back to the question. That Sefer now makes sense. Why you can be chayef for kefal for 20 times gone? Because you made the oath in court. There's a real oath. Now how do you understand the Reisha? The Reisha is back difficult on Rav. When the guy swore that it was lost and the witnesses testified that he ate it, he pays, according to Rav, that's Rav's whole teaching that you should be potter. He says, well, Akash, it's not difficult. You know why? Khan, the ratio which says you have to pay is bekofatz. It's told me when this guy jumped and he swore before the courts held him responsible to swear. <coughs> when did Rav say? Rav said when he didn't jump and the judges made him swear. Then he acquires the object with that oath because the Pasuk is talking about, to answer your question you asked before, by Shavuos Hadayanin, an oath that the judges make him take. So therefore, says the Gemara Khan in the Sefer, when we hold that it is a valid oath, is Bishalai Kafatz, when he doesn't jump. So the Sefer is not talking about when you jump because it says you can be Chayav Kefal, and Kefal is only with the Shavuos Hadayanin, with the oath that the judges make you take. But the Reish is talking about that he did jump. And Rashi explains that he prefers to explain it with two different cases of Kafatz and not Kafatz, but in the same place that it was in Bezdin, and not to explain it in two different places, which is one is in Bezdin and one's out of Bezdin. And then Rashi says, why isn't the Sefer difficult on Rav? Because it says that he pays Kefal after his oath, and for sure that means he's going to pay the Karen. I thought, I thought Rav said that once you swear to anything, you're not chayv anything after that. Says Rashi, Rav admits, as we're going to see later on the sugya, that when you're toyin tainas ganev, when you make a claim that was stolen from you and you swear to that effect, that oath actually obligates you in kefal, and it does not acquire for you the karen. As we'll see explicitly, that's what the Pasuk comes to tell us over there. And therefore, that doesn't contradict Rav's teaching that when you swear to something, that then you're a putter and you would not subsequently be chayiv in any monetary payment. So it's a little complex. Also, we'll go through and show you which are the cases that it would exempt and which are the cases that the Torah tells you clearly would not exempt. But Omali Rami Bachamal Rav Nachman, he says, well, Mechdi, let's see. The Rav, Lisvirloch, Rav's teaching you don't hold of, you don't agree to his principle that we start off the daf with, that if someone says, and the guy says, you know, I don't know anything, and he swears and then witnesses come that you can be a potter. So, to make your life collateral for Rav, meaning to come and to 
to, in his place to answer all the questions and to substantiate his opinion. Lamalach, what, what do you need this for? Why, why are you doing this? So Malay says, Lafrusha Ladirav. I'm just coming to explain for Rab. This is how Rab would answer the Mishnayis, but you're right, I don't hold like him. So the Gemara wonders, why doesn't Rab Nachman hold of Rab? But Rab brings a Pasik. The Pasik is, it says that once the owner takes the oath, then the, the defendant doesn't have to pay anymore. So why wouldn't he hold like Rab? So Amri, they said, the Kura, the Pasik, is coming to teach you something else. It's teaching you, all the times the Torah says that there's an oath, an obligation, is nishboin v'loy mishalman hu da'asa. It's coming to tell us that it, the guy swears that he, and he, that he doesn't pay is what is coming. Meaning, the defendant swears and he's exempt, and not that the claimant swears and he collects. Because that's what the Pasuk's teaching you. The owner is going to take the oath, and he's not going to pay. Meaning, the one who has to pay, he swears, and then he doesn't pay. It's not that one guy swears and he collects. That's what the Pasuk is coming to teach you, and therefore it's not extra to teach you Rav Huna Amarav's halacha. And therefore Rav Nachman disagrees with Rav because he doesn't have a Pasuk to have this teaching. But now Master Rav Amnuna. Rav Amnuna asks further on Rav's teaching from a Mishnah Masech Shavuos. Mishnah says like this, Hishbiya Allah, if let's say the owner made the guy who's denying the money take an oath, Chamisha Pa'amim, Five times. I want you to swear. He says, I swear. I want you to swear. I swear. Whether it was in front of court, whether it was not in front of court, and, and he continues to deny it every single time he swears. He's reliable for each and every one of these denials of Chaymish and an Ashim. We know that taking Shvua, the base thing is very against it. How do you see Shvua for five times? <laughs> I hear. I hear. And it's startling for me to look at that. It says also being collected. Huh? It says also being collected. Right, 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 yeah. I mean, they do warn him, but I guess he could have been, could have been, could have been in front of a different court also. So maybe they don't know that this happened. It doesn't say it happened at the same time. It could have happened in the weeks apart or whatever. But be that as it may, he's kind on each and every one of them a chaymish and the asham. Which is that when you swear falsely and then you admit, <coughs> you're chayv. Now, Rabbi Shimon says, Matam. He says, wait a second. Well, why are you being chayv for each and every one? It's, it's the same denial. So, how you chayv, another fifth, another fifth, another fifth, another fifth, another asham, another asham, another asham for every time? He says, I'll tell you why. Because since he could have gone back and admitted and comes out, that by every one of them, he's denying something worth of money because he could have admitted, and if he would admit, he'd be potter. So therefore, by denying, makes him chayiv because you're actually denying something. That's what Shimon says. Says the Gemara, Bahach over here, You cannot say, now remember, the guy's swearing and he's being chayiv after he swears falsely. So um, the question is on Rav. Rav says, once you swear, and again, this is a technical point because we're going to clarify something based on this questioning and answer, but the Gemara is assuming that anytime you swear according to Rav, your potter afterwards from payment. And yet here we see that after swearing, he's chayiv, and it could even be five times. And the Gemara says it, it forewarns an answer. Because before we said, oh, 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 it has to be a real Shavuah. When you jump and make an oath, well, that's not a real oath because it's not a Shavuah Sadayanan. says the Gemara, no, you can't say over here that the guy jumped on his own and said the oath because there's Shbiel of Gatani. The, 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 the Mishnah clearly says, as, as, as Rashi explains, because it doesn't say Hishbiyoi, he made him take an oath. It's Hishbiyah love. Um, like, like Taisa explains, that terminology um, connotes that it was through judges that he imposed on them the oath. And he, he accepted that, uh, that, that oath. So you can't say that he jumped and said it, so it's a real oath. And Chutz Lebeznam, it says, I mean, you can't say that it was because out of court, so it wasn't like a legitimate oath, and therefore you could be chayav after you swear. Because Bifnei Beznam, 
One of the cases was, it says, whether he did the oath in front of court. And it says there in the Mishnah that, oh, because he could go back and he could admit. So obviously, that is still considered that there's a monetary obligation even after he makes an oath. Well, that contradicts Rav. Rav said that there's no more monetary obligations after you swear. So says the Gemara, who moisa blah Rav Amnuna had asked the question and he gave the answer. He said, let's start in Ketani. There's a classic Talmudic answer that um, it's not everything's going on everything. There's sides over here. One thing is for one thing and one thing's for another thing. Meaning like this. Read, you have to read the Mishnah. Hishbi love. If he made him take an oath, so that's like the judges. Yeah, but that was chutz lebezin. That was out of court. So though the court made him take an oath, since it was out of court that, they, that he swore, so there Rav, Rav's teaching would not apply. The guy's not going to be kind of the object. And ube <laughs> bezdin, meaning because one of the cases we said was befnei bezdin, that's not going on his a love. That's talking about kafetz when you jumped. So although the, both words indicate that it was, they made him swear and it was in bezdin, those are not one case. Those are two different cases. His a love is going on chutz lebezin. And Lufnei Bezin is going with those kafats. So it doesn't contradict Rav because, yeah, you could be chayv after Shvua because the, it wasn't, didn't have the quality of a bona fide Shvua to be kaina, and therefore he'll be chayv after Shvua. But most of Rava. Now, what gets interesting is now, Rava asks on how Rav Amnuna had explained Rav where he presumed something. It's a little of a, a, a tech, very like a finer technical point. Then that's why Rav Nuna had asked on Rav's teaching that even in a case of swearing falsely and then admitting that you, the, Bryce, the Mishnah told us you can be chayev, Rav Nuna obviously understood that Rav would hold that you would be putter. Meaning if you swear falsely and then you admit, which is what the case of the Mishnah Shavuos was talking about, Rav Amnuna understood. Rav would say, you'll, you'll be potter. You swore you should be potter. Even though it's talking about where there's a hoida, which is what the Allah of Chaim Hashanashim is, from, is when you admit. R- R- Rav asks from the following b'risa on that assumption of Rav Nuna. The b'risa says, Balabayis shatoyin tainis kana bibikad. If you have a homeowner who makes the claim, meaning a shemachin, the guy was watching something for free. He claims when the guy comes back after his trip, he claims, well, your deposit was stolen from my shed. V'nishben, he swears to that effect. V'hoyden, and then he admits. Ubo edem. And witnesses come, so it depends. Imat shulebo edem hoyde, if he admitted before the witnesses came. So that's your halacha, mesham karen v'chaymish v'ashem. He pays the principal, and added fifth, karen v'ashem, not the kefal, because a person does not pay a kanas, which is what the kefal is, based on his own admission. So therefore, he doesn't pay the kefal. But but if he only admitted after witnesses came, then Misham Tashlum Kefal for Asham, he'll pay Kefal and Asham, Kefal because the witnesses came first, he didn't admit to it, and the Asham because he admitted to his uh, guilt of lying, but not the Chaimish, Rashi explains because the Chaimish is already subsumed in the Kefal, as the Gemara said in Meruba, previously in the Chaim Alf. But one thing we see is that whether he swears and witnesses come, or whether he swears and he admits, that what's the halacha? He's going to be chayiv. Well, that's not like Rav's teaching. Rav says, once you swear, you're going to be potter. Now, moreover, says Rav, Baruch over here, chutz lebezin v'kafatz. If, um, you, to say that it was out of court or the guy jumped, lemet sisa amrit, you can't say that the guy swore on his own or was out of court because keifel katani. It tells us that there's a liability of keifel and um, that would only be Bifne Bezin and Shavu Sadayanan. And even so, it tells us that if the guy admits he's going to be Chayiv in the Karen, which is Nalik Rav, if you say, like Rav Amnun assumed, that he's going to be Potter even if he subsequently admits. So, Elam Rav, because of this question, Rav says that actually. Don't answer to Rav Menuna's question, like we had said before, what's called the tzedadin. That we had to say, oh, no, the case of Nishbalov, 
Mashpiachani was was one case, and Nishbal of Bezin, meaning, and then Lufni Bezin was another case. No, because this question of Abnuna of Yochel Achzal Ahaydais that the reason why the guy there's a chiyav of mammon that therefore you can be chayiv says Reb Shimon for every time he swears falsely because yochel lags l'hoid does he go back and admit that's not a question on Rav Huna. why because kol hoid and this is an important principle any time and this is where we get to like qualifying uh, the teaching of Rav and clarifying any time there's a subsequent admission of the guy who swore falsely. But it doesn't make a difference because we'll see shortly there, there could be differences what the claim is. But in this regard, if a guy admits, there's no difference of twenty times of it if the Shemir had said he claimed it was stolen from him, uh, lost from him. It doesn't make a difference if he claims it was stolen from him. And he swears to that effect. Because even though Geneva Veda the same thing in regards to liability, that he Shemachin was exempt from Geneva Veda, there is a difference, as we'll see shortly, in Halacha. Depends on what he claims, but in this regard, if he swears and he admits, Loi Amarav, Rav did not say over there you can be potter. Why not? Didn't you say, once the owner takes the oath, you don't pay anymore? No, dog, save, because the Pasik says, the Hizvada. By Gesla Ger, which is when you steal from a convert, the Pasik says, in that Pasik, that the Hizvadu es Chatosam, they're going to confess their sins that they did. And then they're going to give back what they stole, and they're going to add on a fifth to the one that they're guilty to. Now, the Pasig is talking about where the guy swore falsely, and then it says that they admit. So the Pasig is explicitly writing in there that you're high for the principal and the added fifth. So you can't tell me Rav's teaching that, oh, that you'll be putter in the case of Haida, because when you admit, that is the Torah telling you explicitly that you're going to pay. So that's very important. Anytime you're in Nishba Bahaida, you're going to be Chayev. That's the passage that we see by Gezla Ger. Moreover, Toin Tainus Ganav Abo Edom, another case. If the Shaymer claims they're stolen from him, and subsequently witnesses come, which that also sounds like Rav's teaching, you swear to an effect, and then witnesses come, it should be Velaka Balab, the owner takes the oath, Velay Shami don't pay. No. In this case, Rab Rab also did not say that you'll be exempt from the principle. Why? When the Torah says you're chayef a kefal, was said in the context of when you swear and the witnesses come, as the Gemara says in Merubah, so you can't say that's where Rab's teaching is going to be said, that, oh, I made an oath, I should be potter. So then says the Gemara, Ki Kamar. So then when did Rav say his teaching, specifically in this case. So it's a very technical but uh, critical differentiation that the Gemara is making based on how we translate these Gzeir Sarkasas. Kugun Shatoyin Tainis Avad, very importantly, not that he claims that it was stolen from him, he claims it was lost, but Nishman he swears, Veloi Haida, and he does not admit, so those two are critical because it was Tainis Tainis Ganav would be one thing, and if he admitted it also would be differently. Though he claims it was lost, he does not admit, and the witnesses come, that's where you're going to be part of, that's where the Pasuk applies, so therefore, the mission of Avamnuna is not difficult, because there was with Haida, that's the Allah of Chaymish for Asham, the Rav is not difficult on Rav, of course you'll be Chayev, and the Bryce of Rav is also not difficult, because that was a case of Toyin Tainis Ganev, we will also be chayv. So those are the two halachas. If you're nishba v'hayda, you're chayv. If you're toin tenis ganev v'nishba, then when this comes, you can be chayv. Rav's halacha was specifically by toin tenis ovid v'nishba v'achach bo'edim, then is where he says you're going to be pot. Now, the Gemara tells us, Azal Rav Gamda, Rav Gamda went v'amr l'shmaita, he said over uh, this teaching of Rava, that he said, Rav never said his halacha of that when you swear falsely, then you're subsequently potter, because the guy took your oath, and you don't have to give the monetary payment, that Rav never said it by a case of when the guy himself ends up admitting, like he brought the source from Gezlager, which Gezlager explicitly says that you're chayiv after you swear falsely, if it's his vadu when you ultimately admit, Rav Gamda said this teaching, come the Ravashi, in front of Ravashi. So Amalei Ravashi said to him, wait a second, Hashta, now let's take a look. 
Rav Amnuna, if Rav Amnuna, who was Tamide de Rav, he was a student of Rav, as the Gemara tells us in Sanhedrin, David Zayin, whenever it says Amri Bey Rav, they send the Shiva of Rav, that refers to Rav Amnuna. So, the Yada Dama Rav Hoida and Rav Amnuna, he knew that Rav said his teaching that you can be potter even when the guy subsequently admits, because Vakamaisiv Hoida. He asks from a Mishnah that talks about when the guy admits, meaning, like Rashi, the last line explains, if he didn't know that Rav exempts even when the guy subsequently admits, he wouldn't have asked from this halach of because the guy could go back and admit, so therefore he should be high for each and every one. What do you mean? Admitting, admitting you're not high for. How's the monetary thing of, of admitting to say that the guy's denying? There, there is, there, there, there's no ob- monetary obligation. No, obviously Rav Nuna understood in Rav's teaching, or he heard from him, that you chayev even when you do admit, I mean, you putter even when you do admit, but I mean, you're saying like Rav, the Rav didn't say his teaching when you admit? How can you say that? Rav Nuna, who asked this question, is evidently that he knew Rav's teaching was even when you do admit. And therefore he had to give a different answer of explain let's in to say that no, it's not in front of Bezdin, it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't that they made him swear, he swore on his own. How could you say and qualify by answering otherwise? So Amalei Ravacha, Saba, Ravashi, Ravacha, the elder said Ravashi, it's not true. Don't prove to me from Rav Nuna's question that he disagreed with the premise of Rav. Rav Nuna's question was as follows, the Ketin Tamad Beis. If you're going to say that when the guy swears falsely, ki also Edmo witnesses come after his first oath. Mechayiv, he would have to pay the principal. So then it comes out that you're right, there's still some monetary obligation over here. And Amatul Hachi, and that's why Mechayivin like carbon Ashwabas rice, and that's why you could make him liable for another carbon for his subsequent oath, for the second oath, because this halacha, that one oath cannot take effect on another oath, will not exempt him. Why? Because it's not considered as the same oath, because he could go back and admit between each and every oath, comes out that each and every oath was an oath of denial through the liability of the witnesses, independently, because you could have gone and admitted so the fact that you're denying it again is a denial of something monetarily. But if you say, he also ate them part of it, if you say like Rav's teaching, that when witnesses come, not the, not the idea of being maida, but that if witnesses would come, you'd still be part of So make me these, there's such a thing, that if witnesses come along, and they testify, after the guys swore falsely, you tell me Rav's teaching tells you you're part of and now we're going to go and make him liable for a carbon on the oath because since he could go back and admit but has to me like lady now but but but, at, but he didn't admit and and um, um, between each and every oath so it comes out what is he denying just words not money because you cannot extract this with witnesses that was Rav Nuna's question uh, on on Rav. And he agrees to Rava that you're not chayiv with your haida. It only was saying that if you hold that witnesses cannot do anything, so then there is nothing over here. Not because of the haida, because of the witnesses. And therefore, um, the Gemara justifies Rava's qualification, and you can't prove anything from the question that he disagreed with Rava's premise. Now, continuing with the prior theme, Amr Rebchia Bar Abba Amr says, Hatoyin. Tainas gana bipikana. If someone makes a claim that something uh, or the positive is watching was stolen. So again, this is important. This is although the Torah tells us explicitly the halach of kefal by a ganav, this also applies to what's called toyin tainas gana. If he claims it was stolen from him, and through that he's stealing it by not paying. So halach is misham from the kefal. He has to pay the same halacha when he's caught, like by a real ganav. He also has to pay kefal. And if tavach amacha, if he slaughters the animal or sells it. He has to pay four or five times the amount. So the Gemara explains. Since a Ganav pays double the amount, and between times Ganav Hashem Tashul Mekeful, as we'll explain what the source is later on, when the guy makes a claim that a stone, he also pays Kefal, so we can make the following comparison. Ma Ganav Shum Hashem Mekeful, just like a thief himself, when he, he pays Kefal. Tavach HaMacher, if he slaughters or sells a Hashem Tashul Mekeful, he has to pay four or five times the amount. So now, ten times gone, but because same thing is regarding if a guy claims it was stolen by a deposit, when he pays 
double. If he slaughters or sells it, he also pays four or five times the amount. So the Gemara has a question, says, wait a second, it's not the same thing. Can't really make such a clear comparison. Because Malaganam, what are you going to compare to a thief? When he pays his kefal, it's even without swearing falsely. He's just caught with witnesses and say, hey, this guy's the Ganav. Time by time, time is gone. What are you going to say about a guy who claims he was stolen? He doesn't pay kefal only if he makes an oath. And then witnesses come, as the Gemara teaches him, and the Gemara teaches him, so, so how can you compare the two and say, oh, just like over there, so do over here. It's, it's not the same thing. And there is more severe. So I mean, they said, no, hekeshahi. It's a hekesh, where the Pasuk equates a thief and the guy who makes a claim of a thief, because the Pesukma near each other. When it talks about im yimatze haganev, it says, if you're going to find a thief, so that's talking about the thief. And then the Pasuk says, vim lo if you're not going to find a thief, meaning like the Shemer was saying, Rather, he himself is stealing it, which is because he made a claim of a stone. Turns out he himself stole it. So the Pesukim are near each other. And the Amish even Allah Hekesha, a well-known Talmudic dictum, we don't ask questions on the Hekesh. If the Pesuk puts them near each other, the Pesuk obviously wants us to compare them, even though it's not really the same exact. But then the Gemara says, wait a second, this is not according to everyone. This is good according to the one who says, that one Pesuk, is talking about the actual thief. And the next pasuk, if you don't find him, is talking about when the guy makes the claim it was a thief. Shaper, okay, so you see that the pasuk that is making a hekesh. Elamandam, according to one who says, which this is brought in Perak Merubah, some of Gimel Beis. Hi, if you don't find him, this if it says if you'll find the thief, you won't find the thief. Tavaya between times ganav, they're actually both talking about by not the thief itself, but by a guy who claims that there was a thief because. The thief himself actually has learned it from a different passage, which it says in a different parasha. So, my command, what are you going to say? Where's their hekish? They're not said near each other. So, how do you know this halacha of Tavachamachar, Chayav Dal from the halacha of Ganav if they're different? So, they said, Ganav Ha Ganav. By the parasha of Shemachinam, instead of saying Ganav, it says Ha Ganav. The extra He is including the Toyentines Ganav. And we learn out all the halachas of Geneva. To include Tashlumi Kefil and Dal Vahey that apply not only by the real thief, but even the guy who claims that it was stolen. Now, however, Israel Bhia Barabla Rubyhan. Bhia Baraba asked on Rubyhan for the following price. Remember, Rubyhan had said this halach of Toyntan is Ganav by Pakadan, not only Mikhaib Kefil, but if you tough machin Mikhaib Dal Vahe. The the question is from the following Bryson. Bryson says, Hey Khan Sherry, if a guy says, Where's my ox? says, Nick never was stolen. I want you to take an oath. My mom and he accepts the oath. Then the aid made Moshe Shachol. Then witnesses testify that he himself aided. So Mosham Tashlumi Kefil, he has to pay Kefil because of Tain Tanis Ganav that he claimed it was stolen when really he himself had taken it. He says Gemara, wait a second. Vahachol be here. What did the what happened? What did the witnesses say? He claimed it was stolen. It was Tain Tanis Ganav, and then they say he ate it. Now the Efshle Kizayis Basam Leishchita. It can't be that you ate any part of the meat without having slaughtered it, which is Tavach. Rektani instilled the Mishnah taught Misham Tashlumi Kefil, you pay Kefil, which is Tashlumi Kefil in, only double, but Tashlumi Dal Vehei Loi, but not four or five times. Why not? You told me that Allah of Tavach Machar of Dal Vehei applies even by turning Tan's Ganav. He ate it as a Nevela. You're right, he didn't eat kosher. Avera Gerer Zavera. He didn't properly slaughter it. So therefore, there wasn't Tvicha. Says Gemar Vilashan, why can't you answer that he did a Shechita but Kagan Shachl Trefa? For example, let's say he ate it that it had a moral defect, because as Rashi explains, you have Reb Shimon who exempts even when you do a bona fide shechita, but it turns out it was a trefa, you're not chayab dal vehe, as the Gemara said, of Ainam and Alf. So that the Gemara answers, Reb Yechon and Kireb Meir, he holds a Gemara Meir, Dama Shechita, She'en Neruya, that even if you do a slaughtering that's not appropriate, doesn't allow you to eat it, but since it was slaughtered like in the regular way of slaughtering, Shema Shechita, it is called a shechita, you would be chayab dal vehe. So if we want to explain why you only have kevul, we have to say that you didn't do a shechiti, you just made a nevela. Says but I have a different approach. Why can't you say v'lishanle? Why can't you answer that um, when the guy stole the bent pekua? Bent pekua is a very interesting case, which is that if someone finds um, in the womb of the mother um, a, 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 a baby, and um, it, it, after you slaughtering and you take it out, there is an opinion that holds that. It's, it's kosher without even shechting, as the Gemara brings the Chodav Ayin Dalman base. As the Mishnah teacher Reb Shimon Shazuri says, even if the animal is five years old and it's just plowing in the field, you could just you could just take a bite out of it. You don't have to the slaughtering that you did for its mother. It, it was in the womb. It's called a ben pekua. Is going to make it okay. So so why don't you talk about ben pekua? 
where there also there's not going to be a, a tevicha and, and it won't be in the Vela. Says the Gemara, no, he holds, Rabbi Yechon holds Kira Meir, which the Gemara brings there in Chulun, that it says Ben Bakur Torn Shkita. That it's not true, Ben Bakur would require Shkita, so it wouldn't be a good answer. You, you said something, he was not implying that he didn't like the law in Shkita Melchai. It's not, it's not Chai. I mean, it's but slaughtered it's already. Dead, okay, maybe. Died, okay, you have to know. Maybe you have to kill it. But either way, you wouldn't have to do a shechita. Okay, uh, then I'm okay. I hear. I hear. Okay. You have to know if that's if that's considered minachai, right? So the Gemara says, but the Gemara keeps on asking, why do you have to say that he ate in the vela? Why couldn't he answer? Interesting. The Gemara has a bunch of interesting questions that you could say that already had stood at court beforehand, and the guy had said it was stolen, and he swore. And then Adam came along and testified that he himself stole it. And the courts held him liable. Vamurle, they told him, say tenloi. Okay, go and give him the principal and the kefal. And only after that did he slaughter and he eat the animal. Well, then you'll pay kefal for the first oath, but you'll be putter for the slaughtering. Why? Because Amar Rabbah, because Rabbah said, say tenloi. When, when the court already said, go and give him, then tavach If you go and then slaughter or sell the animal, you're going to be exempt for Dal day. Why? My timer. What's the reasoning? Because Kivan the Paske Lamilse, since their court already passed its verdict, and, and, and you owe that money, and he slaughters or sells it, have a goslin. He's not a ganem anymore. He's a goslin. Because we know that this is owed to this person. So he's straight out stealing. Ah, the goslin like Meshamtash above The whole Allah of Kefal and Alba only plays by ganav, surreptitiously, a guy clandestinely, not a goslin. And therefore, actually, you'll be, you'll be, you won't be Chayv Dalvei. If they only said, Chayv they didn't say, Tzay Tenloi. They just said, oh, you're obligated to give to him, and then Betavach HaMacha, then you slaughter on yourself, actually, then you're Chayv. My time, what's the reason? Because as long as they didn't come out explicitly and say, go give it, they just said, Yechayv, Akad the Gan, we're still a thief. It's not like the so definitive and clear cut. But one thing is, why can't you say the case of why he's not Chayv for the Tzvicha, is talking about where they already told him, Tzay Tenloi. Some of them said, Okay, you're right. Good question. Well, time according to reasoning, why couldn't he have answered Beshutav Shatavach Shleimidas Chaveray, a partner who slaughtered without the awareness of his partner? Meaning, if you have two partners in crime that stole an ox, and then one of them slaughtered it without the awareness of his friend, the Gemara tells him Merubah Dav Einchesem Abeis that he, the guy who did slaughter is going to be exempt from Dal Vehei. Why? Because the Torah says Chamisha Bakar Yishalem Tachas Ashar. He has to pay five cattle in place of the shar that he slaughtered which tells us only five cattle, not five half cattle. And here it's not for Tavachai totally b'chiyuvah, because only one of the partners did it. And because the half of his friend, he would be considered as slaughtering or selling from, from, from a thief, because he's like stealing from his partner, because his partner doesn't know about which he would be put to. But if you're right, says Rashi, if he did it with the awareness of his friend, you're right, both of them would have to pay, because then he's a shliach. And the Gemara already told us, and uh, Dafayin Aleph, that the word tachas includes a shliach. But Al-Kapanim, you could, take a, you could say another case of a partner that did it without the witness of his friend. So it says, You're right. Rabbi Yechonah just said one out of two or three different approaches. You're right. You could say many different ways why there wouldn't be a case of Tavicha, and that's why they didn't talk about Achiv of Dalvehe. But if you did do, by turn times gone, a bona fide Tavicha Mechira, not Nevela, not Shutaf, not all these cases, then you're right. You would be Chayiv Dalvehe. So it's not a difficulty under Rabbi Yechonah. Another related teaching says, So up until now we spoke about a Pekadon. You were watching something and you make a claim that it was stolen. How about if someone makes a claim that it was stolen by Aveda? He found someone's lost object. And the guy said, oh, you found, I heard you found my parker pen. He says, oh, it got lost. I, it got stolen. Here also has to pay kefal. My time, what's the reason? Because it says a passage in Shema, that on any lost object, which a guy is going to say, uh, that uh, some excuse, what, what, what happened, let's say, it, like it was stolen from him. So the Pasuk continues, says, Yisham Shnaim, that when he's found to be guilty, he has to pay double. You see, the halach of Kefal applies by Toyin Tainas Ganav by Veda too. However, Isvir Baba Baba Mama Lord Abba Abba, he asked, the Pasuk there previously says, Kiitain Ish. It says, when a man is going to give something to another person to watch for him, and, and it talks about these halachas of the liability of the Shemer. So what does Ish teach us? That ain't the scene is cut and klum. That the giving of a minor, however, has no standing. Because it says Ish, which excludes a minor. You don't swear on the claim of the giving of a minor. Then therefore you cannot come to Kefal through the minor because that's where it talks about Kefal. 
I would only know if the, if the guy gave it when he was a minor and he claimed it when he was a minor. Then you could say that that ish is going on right now. And what the Pasuk is coming to tell us is, if someone that's right now an ish at the time of the claim, that would be excluding um, someone who is still a minor. But if it'd be now a man, maybe I would not exclude such a case. Or Nasnik Shukatan, let's say when he's a minor. But but if he makes the claim that even though he's an adult now, how do you know he's still going to be potter as long as he gave when he was a minor? Because Tamalim, the Pasuk says, Adil Kim, name. Until the judges, both their words are going to come. So we're comparing the giving, which the Pasuk says about, it says, ki uh, thing, and it talks about Adil Kim, which is the Hamad Abedin, which is the court case. The Pasuk is equating the two of them to tell us, it has to be that the giving of the object to watch and the claiming of the liability of the shamer have to be the same. Meaning, by both of them, we need to have that the guy should be an ish. And if the child, if he's a cotton at any point, even in the sina, you're not going to be chai. Says the Gemara, Ben Isa, behold, wait a second, how could it be less than a lost object? A lost object, the guy never gave anything, the guy found it. And it's still a claim to require an oath to be chayva kefal. So if that's the case, if this guy is already an adult, although he gave it to him like when he's 11 years old to this guy to wash, it comes up when he's 14, why is he not obligating this guy to take an oath and kefal, even though there's no nesina? How could it be less than Rabbi Yechon Zalach of Aveda? So Malay said to him, you know what we're talking about here in the Braise? We're talking about where the shamer consumed the pekadin, Kishahu, when the mafkid, when the owner was still a cotton, was still a minor. Where this pekadin never ever came to an element of being able to be a claim. Because even though now he's a godl, but it was already consumed already when it was still a cotton. But an Aveda, a lost object, once it comes to this guy's hand, he becomes obligated. Of course, there are owners that are people that could have a taina. So that's how Rashi explains that that's the fundamental difference because there is a Baal that, that could have a taina, even though he never gave it to him. But says, wait a second, what are you telling me? But if he would be an adult, what would be the halacha? That if, he be, if the child had become an adult and he became a bar taina, that this guy would be obligated to come to him with court, even though there's no nesina? If that's the case, instead of the, 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 the Bryce is telling us, that the giving and the claiming have to be the same as one. Listen, it should say, it should say that the consuming of the object and the claim has to be one because you don't need a Nasina based on this uh, amended teaching of Rabbi Yechanan. So Malay says, yes, today you should read it. You're right, you don't have to have a Nasina like you see from Rabbi teaching by Aveda. <laughs> you could have the Chiv of Kefal, the Tain Tainas, Gan of Yimbaba Aveda, that obviously tells us that you don't need to have a, a Nesina, and, and that's why you'll be Chiv by a cotton. Or another approach, says the Gemara, Rav Hashem, he says, Loi Dami, they're not comparable. Because Aveda, the question doesn't start. Why not? Aveda is Ka'asi Mekoyach Ben Das. You're right, although he never gave it to him, but it's still coming from the guy who lost it is someone who has intelligence, he's an adult. But for her, when it's deposited by a child who gives it them to watch, it's not coming from an intelligent person. And therefore, even though you would say, well, what's the difference? Both of them, it wasn't given by Bendas. Yeah, but it's who to come from is still a fundamental difference. And therefore, that's why it's not difficult in the beard. Thank you for any time for hosting us.